Hello everybody, welcome to this windy beach. Um, I was gonna sit on this rock because I think it's a pretty cool rock, but it's so windy that instead I'm going to use this rock as a shield <laughs> from the wind. I have my microphone in my mask. So hopefully that's working. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Today I am discussing a topic that's actually really important to me. It's something that I have been reading about for years and years and watching content about. I'm sure that maybe some of you have clicked on this because you recently watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix and it's some of the books I'm going to recommend are fr from like people that they interviewed in that documentary. But I'm talking about books that will help you be a better internet citizen. As a person who spends so much time online, whose income comes from the internet, I want to know that what I'm doing here is positive and how I treat others here is positive and that I actually know that these spaces that I'm in and we should think of them as spaces. We should think of Twitter and Instagram and YouTube as places that you're hanging out, that these are places I want to be hanging out. This video is brought to you by Glasses USA. We're talking about social media, we're talking about technology, and I thought this was the perfect collaboration because Glasses USA offers blue light blocking lenses. Whether they're prescription or not, you can get uh, lenses that will block the blue light that comes from screens, whether that's your computer, whether that's your phone, or your TV. They have over 6,000 pairs for you to pick from, whether that's in-house brands like these ones that I've been wearing for like two years, or uh, brands that you've heard of like Ray-Ban. The best part is that they're incredibly affordable. A full pair of glasses, including prescription lenses, and the frame starts at only $30. Especially right now, when we're all at home. Stay at home, stay home, stay safe. Uh, you can buy them online, and they have tools to help you see what they would look like on your face. It's just great. I've been working with Glasses USA for the last few years and I love the team there. They are such lovely people, but also I love their glasses. They're just really comfortable. My prescription's always perfect. It's great. So if you are like me or like half of the population of this planet and you wear glasses, definitely check them out. Link is in my description and thank you so much to Glasses USA for sponsoring my channel. So let's start. The first book, and I'm using a rock to hold this down because I had a horrible I don't want to talk about it. It's the book that started it all for me, and that is So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. Whew. This book changed my life. It has genuinely changed my life for the better. This is an exploration of how shaming happens online, how it happens, and maybe more importantly, what the repercussions of those moments are like. It is so interesting and I wish that it was mandatory reading for everyone who uses the internet because it teaches you about compassion, about empathy. I also really like it because it's funny. It's a funny book. He is a really funny and very interesting person. Um, I could not use the internet the same way after I read this book. But one of the things that I always say to people is, we used to have public shamings. Like different cultures had different versions of public shamings, like making people stand in the, in the middle of town square with a sign over them, or having children when they did something wrong be humiliated by standing in front of their classroom for the rest of the day, etc. And we decided not to do that anymore as a culture, as government because it was seen to be too psychologically cruel. But now here we are again, shaming people on the internet. What does that do to us? Before I go into the rest of the books that I'm so excited to talk about, I, I need to talk about today's sponsor. The next book I wanna talk about is one that my friend Finley recommended to me, and it is iGen by Jean M. Twenge. I think that a lot of this kind of pop psych should be taken with a grain of salt. I also think that generational psychology is a little sketchy, <laughs> like saying that all boomers do this and all zoomers do this and all millennials do that. I don't think that's very helpful, but this book was really, really illuminating into the effects of social media on young people. 
It's especially looking at this generation that has had social media since they were born, which is terrifying. <laughs> Kids who have always had smartphones with them, hence iGen, like iPhone, have had, like I remember when I was in grade nine, so I was 14, I remember the a girl in my class, Brooke, in music class, we both played flute. She was the first person I ever knew that had an iPhone and I would go to class and I, and I would go to class and I would ask her if I could please swipe to unlock because that technology was incredible at the time, right? These kids have always known that. I have called this book the like non-fiction version of the film 8th grade that was directed by Bo Burnham. If you've seen that movie, and if you haven't, you should. It will scare you straight. And if you have children, it will make you throw their phones away. <laughs> um, but this is kind of the like data version of the film Eighth Grade. It shows you how bad social media affects your mental health. And it goes right into the details, right into the data, how suicide rates have gone up, how people's perceptions of themselves have gone down, how people's confidence have gone down, how people now have less friends, how they feel much lonelier. Overall, I did take a lot away from this one. Okay, next up is a little bit different, and it is How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, Resisting the Attention Economy. So I really recommend that you actually listen to the audiobook version of this one. This is kind of an antidote to social media. If, you know, you've come to the conclusion, yeah, like, yes, I've read the books, I know I need to use social media less, I know I want to, like, be in nature, there's a reason I picked this setting, more. This book will help ground you in how to do nothing. And, and what she means by that is we have kind of all been sold this idea that we have to be constantly productive. And what does being productive mean? Checking your emails, in like posting something on Instagram, post like making sure that you've caught up on Facebook, etc. All of these things keep us constantly distracted. And this book is kind of the antidote to that. It's her musings and it is a bit rambly, but I like that because it's kind of, um, it's a little meta. It's like form fitting. Uh, function or the medium is the message kind of thing. She talks about why it's important to be bored, why it's okay to not do anything, why you should have hobbies you don't monetize, why you should be okay going on trips and not posting about them. I really enjoyed it. There's ideas in here that I'm still thinking about after reading this like six months ago. Um, and like I said, I, I definitely recommend the audiobook. Um, actually, I just realized I have an affiliate link you can use for an audiobook of this if you want. Not sponsored, but affiliated. Okay, up next we have this book that is the latest one I've read, and I, the, maybe this is, okay, the one I recommend the most is probably So You've Been Publicly Shamed, but then it's this one. 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right Now by Jaron Lanier. This is exactly what it says it is. It is so short, it's a, a, under 150 pages, and it shook me. <laughs> it is clear. It's concise. Jaron Lanier has been a member, like a part of Silicon Valley since the beginning of Silicon Valley. He is like one of the original creators of virtual reality. And he just puts it all perfectly. The points hit home. Things like social media is making what you say meaningless or social media is making you unhappy. Social media is making politics impossible. I had been considering deleting my Twitter for a long time. I had j basically stopped using it for a few years and then COVID happened and I found myself stuck at home, feeling lonely, wanting to know what was going on in the world and I slowly drifted back to using Twitter, and I hate Twitter. I hate Twitter. <laughs> I then read this book and it finally kind of set me free and I fully deleted my Twitter. Like I didn't just like change my password. No, I deleted my account because one of the things that I really agree with in this book is that you need to spend time in the places that you ideologically agree with. Like, would you go to a cafe that was racist? 
No, because you don't agree with the cafe. So why would you support it? By having an account, you're supporting Twitter or you're supporting Instagram or whatever. And I don't agree with Twitter. I think we should all leave. So I left, right? It's like, you know how everyone says you vote with your dollars? I think you also vote with your accounts. So this book is phenomenal. I really, really wish more people would check it out. I also do recommend the audio book. It was really great. Okay, my fifth recommendation is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I wanted to include a fiction book. I've read a few fiction books about social media or that have some sort of social media aspect, but not many that I've really loved. But this is one that uh, it became one of my favorite books of all time. I think that this is phenomenal. Not only is it exciting and fun and rompy, it's about aliens coming to our planet. A bit like National Treasure in the best way. I freaking love National Treasure. But also because it deals with how the internet changes people. I just have to read you one of my favorite quotes here. The most insidious part of fame for April wasn't that other people dehumanized her. It was that she dehumanized herself. She came to see herself not as a person, but as a tool. This is written by Hank Green, right? Vlogger extraordinaire. He gets it. He's clearly thought deeply about all of this before. Our main character is the first to stumble onto one of these giant robots that has appeared all over the, that have appeared all over the world. She happens to make a video about it, post it on YouTube and it goes viral. So suddenly she is kind of thrust into um, online fame. And Hank Green tackles this topic with grace, with thoughtfulness, with compassion. It, so many of the moments in here had me like feeling really understood. All right, I have one more book that's sort of a bonus book and it is Mary Oliver's Blue Horses. I don't know if you read poetry, but I think you should give it a shot. Maybe you think you don't like poetry because poetry is taught to us in such a dumb way at school, <laughs> but I really think you should give it another chance. And the, Mary Oliver is a genius. She unfortunately passed away was it this year or last year? And she's just such a gem. Her poems are so beautiful and they're all about nature. Her poems are all about nature. They're about loving the earth, the, this earth right here, this rock <laughs> right here. Uh, her poems make you want to go outside. They make you want to jump up in the air and love this planet and take care of this planet. Um, and so even though it's not about internet, it's not about technology, I think that if you're trying to deconnect from this whole online thing, books about nature and about the world and how we don't need the internet to be happy are important. Okay, very quickly before I go, I keep looking down because that's where the microphone is. <laughs> before I go, I wanted to show you some of the books that I'm gonna be reading next. I can't recommend these books yet because I haven't finished them, but if you've read some of these or you might be interested in just following along, I've got these boys, so let me grab them. <laughs> Up first, I have A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. This is the sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. I'm about two thirds of the way through it. I'm loving it. And it's having a lot of the similar themes that I really liked in the first book. Then I have Self Care by Lee Stein or Lay Stein. This is a book about two women who run an online like health and lifestyle company that's like Goop. Right at the very beginning of this book, the one of the co-founders tweets something controversial and gets in trouble and needs to kind of go to the woods on like an ordered um, vacation to regroup. And it's like, that's the modern nightmare, isn't it? Tweeting something controversial that maybe you didn't mean for it to come across badly, but it does and you get annihilated on the internet. So I'm interested in that one and I'm excited to read more fiction about this, but two more non-fictions that I have. One is Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. This is one that I've also started on audiobook and um, I think the back puts it perfectly. Newport is the Maria Kondo of technology. Digital minimalism, this approach to using online tools and technology in a minimal way that doesn't like have you as an addict. We're addicted. <laughs> and the last one I have is kind of 
a little strange, I guess, but I think it's really cool. It is Founders at Work, um, a collection of interviews by Jessica Livingston, where she interviews a bunch of different, very famous startups and asks them, or like businesses that started as just independent startups and asks them like, how was that process like? I think that it's just an interesting deep dive into the history of the internet and the history of all these websites that we now just kind of assume we're always there but you know somebody started apple and airbnb um and as a person who works on the internet it's really interesting to hear about how other creators made the businesses that they made so these are what's up next for me thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you found it interesting if you have a recommendation for a book you think i should read or i didn't mention here and other people should read please leave it down in the comments thank you again to glasses usa for sponsoring this video it's been a crazy year and i really appreciate the support um and also to my patrons who if you like these videos you could join it's a great club we got over there <laughs> and again i'm so grateful to my patrons for supporting me in a year that I don't even have to say, has been pretty freaking nuts. Please wear a mask and I will talk to you guys in my next video.